I think a very tight time schedule this time. I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask for a motion on the approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda, Eric. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> that was unanimous. It would be really easy to count. The, uh, as far as comments from the chair, I don't have much comments except uh, I asked and we are under some time constraints tonight because the DRB is meeting at 7. So I really want to keep things moving along. Uh, and get as much done. I'd like to get done with the garage at, at seven, so we have something for the DRB. Because uh, the, uh, I'm sure the city manager is going to want to have issues resolved before November sixth when we all vote. If if you can, if you can't, we can find a way to, to we'll, do we'll, something. We'll figure it out. But yeah. I I just I I, I understand. Yeah. From a personal point of view, <laughs> I've looked at this enough now. I don't want to spend another meeting on it. But okay, uh, let's introduce. I'm Eric Gilbertson. I'm the vice chair. And you introduce mm -hmm. yourselves. Meredith Crandall, staff. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. Uh, 126 Main Street. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Teresa Barrows, and I'm with the Department of Liquor and Lottery Division of Liquor Control. All right. Okay. And um, we are looking to replace part of the sign on 126 Main Street, Yankee Wine and Spirits, um, and basically updating the logo um, and the name of the store from outlet to store. Things you want to talk about. Uh, so the lettering will remain the same, same type of lettering, which is looks like this. Yeah. Uh, we'll make it match what's already there. Um, we will repair any issues with the building when we change the letters, um, and we've discussed that with the the uh, landowner. Um, and then um, everything will look the same, with the exception of the 802 Spirits logo. Going to add any lighting or anything? No. Okay. Anybody else have any? Questions? Okay. We've got a series. I don't know if you've got an extra one of these. That's yours. That's this is mine. That form. Yep. Yep. Uh, we have a uh, checklist we have to do. Okay. Uh, design review standards in. A, the preservation or reconstruction of appropriate historic site. I'm, I'm going to say that's uh, acceptable. Uh, it's just simply a redesign of the sign. May I see that? You or yes. him, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. If anybody objects to what I'm saying, let me know before I write. Uh, compatibility of pros exterior materials. It's acceptable. Compatibility of pros landscaping. There is no landscaping. No bushes in the sign. That's good. Um, Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes. That's acceptable. Location appearance of all utilities. Uh, not applicable. Recognition and respect of significant view carriers. I'm going to say that's not applicable. Conformance with city, state placement and design recommendations. That's acceptable. Thank you. Shall not obscure significant architectural details. It's in the sign then, so that's acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs. That's not applicable. Illumination, not applicable. Pants and banners are prohibited. That's not applicable. Individual letters are fixed, painted, and are engraved 
directly on the building or structure are concerned, that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, somewhere I missed. I have one really quick question. Huh? I have one question. Yeah. Um, in the project description, it says 802 Spirits Vermont Liquor Store, and then the sign, as it's shown here, says Vermont Liquor Store 802 Spirits. Um, Is it supposed to be a... So the design here? firm who filled this out, it should be Vermont Liquor Store 802 Spirits. Okay. So the 802 Spirits logo is one that the DLC has had for a number of years, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get people to understand that that's where there is a liquor store. So we're trying to use that on state signs and store signs, and so it okay. should say liquor store 802 spirits. So the right. picture is correct. Right. Okay. Thanks. And then one other just quick question. Mm -hmm. just, uh, how are those affixed? Are they just like a double sticky tape or nope. something? No. So they are actually um, bolted. Uh, bolt mounted onto the um, plywood facade that's on there now, uh, and then if there's any <coughs> holes from existing lettering, that will be filled with caulking. Yeah. It says it in the description. Yeah. Flush mounted to plywood wall with hidden bolts. Right. Yep. One of our most expensive signs. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, all in favor? I hope the other 74 stores go this easily. <laughs> <laughs> do you do the whole state? That's what we're working on. So we have about 40 stores in the works right now. And you personally are going to go do them all? I'm working with the, the um, great big graphics out of Morrisville. So we will visit every store, decide what we do, do the permits for all towns that require them, and um, get, them all, get them all out there. Okay. You need to sign this. Right above my name. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, nope. It's it usually goes back to the chair oh. and then to me. Works perfect. Yeah. We've got a system. And you do not need to go to the DRB. Correct. This. So you'll get a permit issued out of the Department of Planning and Economic and does, Development from us. And will that need to be displayed <coughs> for two weeks prior to? There'll be yeah, there'll be a notice along with the permit to be displayed. And it's um, because it's, e -card? Not two, it's yeah. It's not it's it's not for two weeks. I'm sure they, oh no, it is two weeks. Fifteen Sorry. days, right? Fifteen days, okay. not thirty. So yes. So Sorry. we'll be notified when it's ready. We pick it up and we can. Or we'll mail it to you. I think there was some email correspondence. Yes. So okay. one will go to one of you and one will okay. go to the other. I can't remember who gets what. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Feel free to email tomorrow morning if you want to. Come okay. Out. Great. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. River Street between Langdon and State. This place is, you want to make that permanent, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Dan Groberg, Executive Director of Montpelier Alive. Yeah, and Nate Hausman, Board Member of Montpelier Alive, and uh, I sit on the Design Committee of Montpelier Alive. And Vice President. Oh, <laughs> Vice President, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, we have an existing um, permit for the River Art installation um, that is located um, on the State Street side of the Langdon Street Bridge across the river. Um, and our hope is to have a, um, yes, our, our hope is to, to try having it over the winter uh, to see if there are any issues with it being up over the winter um, and assuming that there are no issues to plan to have it up year round moving forward. And so, and we've been in front of this committee a couple of times for yeah. the seasonal approval and have gotten approval and have also, it's been um, uh, received very, very well by the community. Uh, and so our purpose, I guess, in, and, and I should also say as part of that, we did, did an engineering review per, per this uh, committee's request. And we also uh, have talked to the, the property owners, of course. And, and so all, we've gotten all the green lights. Uh, in, in speaking with Audra um, uh, downstairs, she indicated that she didn't think that there would be any problem with with snow so one of the reasons why we were initially thinking seasonal is we wanted to pilot it for public opinion but uh, but uh, she indicated that she didn't think that there would be any 
challenges with the river flowing um, even in even in winter so the idea our our request is to approve that um, if the ice gets high enough take that that'll be the least of their worries <laughs> yes and that, <laughs> that's our you know if it obviously if it gets carried away by ice it gets carried away just this winter or um, I, I mean ideally I think if the committee could approve it to be permanent so much the better, um, but if you feel more comfortable approving it as a pilot, as a pilot, um, that would be fine. I mean, it's clearly going to weather more over the winter sure. than it does during the uh, during the summer. Uh, and I always worry about maintenance on these things. You know, as those flags get beat up as they do. Uh, you know, who's responsible? Not really alive. Responsible for the thing. Yes. And. Uh, so that's what I, I would probably seek to put a, you know, the res responsible to maintain it, you know, if the flags deteriorate, yeah. you got new ones. That we'd certainly makes sense. Yeah, yeah we'd have no issue yeah, with that. It'd be so. similar to landscaping maintenance. Yeah. I guess my other I comment guess. is it is art that it being permanent seems like maybe there could be some other ideas that happened there so that it didn't necessarily need to be blue flags all the time. Sure. And I mean, um, when we say permanent, we just mean so that we don't have to come back to you next year for another seasonal review. But um, no plans to take it down, but also no plans to say that it's going to be here for the next 30 years either. So we'd certainly be. And certainly part of the original conversations and ongoing discussions have been changing the color of the little flags that flap in the wind and, and things like that too. So we'd, yeah, we'd be welcome. we invite that. Any other questions? Because we all know what it looks like. Yes, um, there's a photo attached as well. They're very popular. Um, it certainly would make our lives easier. It is a significant amount of work to take it down and put it back up seasonally. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just want to put in uh, uh, adjustments to the scope. I just want to uh, add that uh, the, you'll maintain it. Sure. Uh, okay. for maintenance. Maintenance and replacement of flags, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's nothing that looks worse than one of these things. It's just, let's go. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have a series of criteria. Uh, present, uh, preservation or reconstruction of an historic style. That's not applicable in my Feeling harmony of exterior design with other properties of the district. It's not applicable. Uh, compatibility of proposed materials with other properties in the district. This is so different. Uh, not applicable. Landscaping, not applicable. Prevention of incompatible designs, buildings, color scheme, that's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, not applicable. Recognition and respect for view corridors, significant vistas, that's acceptable. For my own clarification, I have a question as to like what the scope of landscaping is. Does that just mean plants? Because this feels like landscaping to me. Um, it qualifies under public art, really. It's not... I mean, technically, you don't even have, no, you do have a zoning permit for because of the design review. Okay. I believe that we um, typically would be exempted, but because yeah. it's in the uh, river specifically, yeah. that and it needs a flood uh, approval from the flood m manager, that it also had to go through DRC. Yeah. So it's, I mean, the landscaping doesn't really, I, I don't think it qualifies as landscaping. I don't Just, think we, I don't think we, if somebody puts a, you know, like a gnome in their front yard, we don't I'll do a zoning permit for that. <laughs> it's yeah, plants, <laughs> you know, it's plants, shrubs, it's not really art like necessarily all okay. the time. Uh, That's different. Do yeah. I hear a motion? I make a motion to accept the. Okay. All in favor? I'll say you in a second. <laughs> all in favor?
Thank you. Yeah, sign it above my name. Yeah, yeah. You Great, thank you very much for your time. Okay. okay. 100 State Street. You gonna want the system? Yeah, if we can, yep. if it'll work. But what I think we're gonna do unless somebody has an objection is listen to the presentation, ask for public comments, and then have our discussion. I do not object. I think during the presentation we'll do what we did last time and turn off the lights so that we can actually see the screen. Cool. And then I figure you'll do that stuff still after stuff on the screen. Yeah. Cool. cool. All right. This should be pretty straightforward as long as there's an open USB port. You good for me to turn off the lights, babe? Yeah. Okay. Oh, is there there's a password, isn't there? Sort out this password thing here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the exclamation point was extra. Yeah. All right. Um, and I just need to find that. Oh. <laughs> Do you need them back on? Well, I'm just trying to. F I don't know this Excited computer very well. Best to try to get through this tonight. All right, but I don't want to rush things or uh, not have questions answered because we're up against seven o'clock deadline. Which, I understand uh, that. I'm going to uh, explain that the design has not changed significantly since I saw you last, um, but I will tell you what we have been up to. Um, one of the things that, that came in too late to be sort of talked about at sketch plan re uh, review was the uh, transition for these rooftops, uh, these stair tower tops to be round, rounded roofs with glass enclosures. Um, the other thing is, is there was some, some exploration of trying to provide a bike path via the Haney lot, down through the Haney lot and, and up to the bike path. Right now, because of the grading difficulties we have in that area, we haven't found a graceful way to get people up there. Um, currently, the, the path that was proposed is from State Street down through the project where you, you come on top of this, this walkway at the top. Well, it's kind of hidden by the bridge, but a walkway along the top here and connect with the base bike path here. You go between the parking lot and the building for that. Yeah, between the, between the uh, hotel and the parking garage, yeah. And um, there's about eight, eight and a half feet of drop from the bike path down to the level of the Haney lot because of the way they did those bridge approaches. And we haven't found a graceful way to do that without creating a huge dam here. And unfortunately, because of what, we, you know, what we're working on in terms of stormwater, we can't, that's the one place we cannot afford to dam water up because the whole watershed comes down through here. Um, one thing we could consider, and I'd love to hear from the board about this, is we could put a pedestrian bridge from the second level of the garage over to the bike path level. That would be doable without having a negative impact on them. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to talk to this board about is uh, you'll have seen in the staff comments, um, Meredith uh, oh, is... They don't get those. Oh, they don't? Okay. No. Well, uh, the question was raised whether or not a vine is a shrub for purposes of meeting your landscaping requirement. Our landscape architect says, yeah, <laughs> I mean, in terms of in terms of it being a, you know, herbaceous woody plant with, with a root and a thing that grows up, it just has a different growth habit. But uh, we are asking that, that the city consider the plantations on the green screen system as being you know, satisfying the requirement for shrubs in this project. We will ultimately have the right number of trees, um, but, uh, but that is something that we, I guess we're going to need consideration on. Yeah, that's, and that's a development review board decision. So they can talk about the design of okay. landscaping, but they won't necessarily talk about the numbers of trees and shrubs. Fair enough. Um, we have also, um, we had previously submitted, uh, oh, geez, I don't want that. We had previously submitted lighting plans for the uh, garage floor plates. I'm sorry. And uh, I think the question was raised, uh, whether or not, you know, what was going on with the exterior lighting. The exterior lighting plan had been prepared during the original round of approvals. Uh, we do have a point-by-point -point analysis for the entire site, including the expanded garage. Um, and those are, uh, those, those are within normal values. Uh, the one area of, of discussion we can have is whether or not, based on comments from the police, we want to allow some light trespass and, and overlight this back area a little bit. And normally we'd try to light things in a way that by the time you got to the property line there was no foot candles spilling over, but it may be desirable in this case to consider doing that. Um, and as far as those fixtures themselves go, oh boy, here we go again. Um, Our proposal for typical street lights is an LED fixture where the LED lamps are buried up in the top of that cone. Um, Philips Lumac makes a nice looking fixture. These are somewhat traditional, I think. I, I, and, I, and it was our thought that f between the hotel and general site pathways and everything in, in downtown that this would be an appropriate choice. Um, if you want to push me off in another direction, that's fine. but. Um, these are these are a good looking fixture. We've used them before. Um, How similar is that to existing? Well, it's not exactly the same um, in terms of uh, you mean in terms of the, the shape of the housing itself. Uh, well, it's not an exact match, but if if that's a concern, I mean, we can keep looking for that. What we were after was the LED feature. The, right. Uh, so the existing LEDs that are in place now. Yeah. Why not just there. I think those are correct. James has matched the same standards. Has he? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. James isn't here, but I, I, I think it. Okay. Um, this is going to be a warm color temperature in the bulbs. Yeah, uh, uh, well, that's a, that's a hot discussion in the lighting trades right now, I guess, whether or not you want blue-white light or yellowish kind of light. Um, it doesn't matter to me because we're after a certain light intensity. But does, the, does the board, does this board have an opinion on that? Well, imagine you want to match what you have currently. Yeah, that's right. I think the city standard called for like 3,000 Kelvin, which is like, yeah, more. That's yeah. warmer. Yeah, yeah that's the warmer light. And blue, and so that's what we specify. There will be fixtures of this type over the entries to the garage and at a couple of other corners uh, for just general security lighting. Uh, it's no, it's nothing fancy, but it's uh, it's a good it's a good fixture. Um, That's LED as well. They're all LED. And you S slightly bigger, <coughs> slightly different form. You know, slightly. The, the lighting is well. This is well shielded, but when you get looking up in the garage and the ceiling lights, have yes, you figured out are people going to be looking at directly at the bulb, or is it going to be shielded enough? Uh, well, I can show you. Um, I think, uh, wait a minute, I'm just looking for the right fixture, okay, um, I, 
hope this is it. Some of these file names, okay, that's, that's a minor fixture that's just used in the stairwells. Uh, but uh, da, 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 I think this is it. Um, so it's got this, uh, it's got this uh, translucent white base on it. These are pretty big. I mean, it doesn't look like it, uh, it, you know, but I think this fixture is a couple feet in diameter. Um, and it's pendant mounted so that it hangs down. It's not hidden. Here's a, yeah, you know, 18 in one direction. Um, what this does is it hangs down between the flutes of the concrete framing of the, of the garage so that when the light comes out of the bottom of it, it's not getting cut off by the, the pieces of the beams. Um, and then we did give a point-by-point -point analysis for the lighting on the floor plates, of the individual floors here. Um, so uh, when you're outside, you'll be looking through a filter of things, uh, but the, those larger openings where we have the sculptural thing going on, I mean, I expect you'll probably be able to look up and see some of these. I, I do. Um, but we should also take a look at uh, some of the visual analysis stuff because, you know, when you look at how these things sit in the... Uh, sit in the landscape, you know, it would really be people on the bike path more than anything who would, who would run into that problem. Um, at the very top of the garage, just on that open deck where we don't have a ceiling to mount, just wanted to show the same fixture as available with a, with a pole mount. And it's simple and it's clean and it's, it's neither modern nor historical looking, but uh, uh, a, a great quality of light and a good manufacturer, so was, we felt comfortable recommending this. So that's going to be on the roof? That would be on the top tier of the okay. uh, parking garage, just okay. running down the center, yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry. I'm slow at nav navigating this way. She did say bring a mouse, but I, <laughs> I forgot. Um, I want to go back to this root file here. We had done a couple of views that were requested specifically. Uh, I don't know that this board got to spend much time on it. This is the view. I actually, uh, Public Works asked us to take this particular view, but this is this is the very end of Shaw's, and next door this fenced-in area. That was that building that was just torn down recently. And here's the uh, here's the railroad right away. You can just see the end of the trestle bridge here, and if you look down through here. That's about what you can see of the garage is that art panel. Just just to put it into context, and then here's the you know the, the hotel beyond, and then there's this, the the uh, Capitol Dome. Uh, we also looked at it from Memorial Drive, but I actually uh, my coworker climbed around behind the gas station and and took this view. And here, here it is, uh, right here in the foreground is what will become Confluence Park. Here's the trestle bridge here, and here's, here's again how you'll perceive this garage from that distance. Uh, you can see here, this is the top deck. is essentially lining up with the floor level of the fourth floor of the hotel. There's the fifth floor of the hotel. And, and in the distance beyond that is the... Uh, um, existing six-story portion of the Capitol Plaza. Uh, the State House Dome is back over here behind these trees. Um, but we, we uh, this is new stuff that we've done since we saw you because uh, the discussion of context was so important. And um, I did bring physical samples of the proposed brick uh, granite and I also brought a piece of the green screen for anybody who hasn't seen it before. I think you all had, but um, that's the actual, that's an actual piece of it. Um, what we buy will be more like a four by eight sheet, but, and uh, it goes with the solid part up, obviously. Um, there was one thing on the garage elevations I did want to point out, and uh, this isn't the one I wanted to do it with, though. Um, let me close this lighting thing. Uh, see here if it's, uh, sorry. Oh, that's that whole set, sorry. 
Um, well, I can get it from here. Uh, what I was looking for was the exterior elevations. Uh, here we go. Uh, that arched component. I don't. This the screen is making this squished a little bit. That didn't help <laughs> at all. Um, I know that I know that a couple members of this board sort of questioned this element, and when I went back and kind of reported to the rest of the city government and and talked to uh, uh, the other team members, um, they asked me to push back a little on that. I think uh, I think there are some people in the group who like it. Uh, I'm am going to ask if this is a deal breaker for the design advisory committee because I got I got constituencies for both approaches. I will say that I liked it when I drew it. I think if it's detailed well, it'll come off well. Um, I also think that uh, you know with the introduction of the slightly curved roofs over the top of the garage, that that having that curved element is a little less random than I think you were concerned before. But I did want to point it out because I know specifically you asked me to look at that, and I that's where I, that's where I landed on it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be confrontational about it. I, that's there was there was a lot of there was a lot of opinion about that. Have you you haven't had a chance to uh, render it as if it were built? It's still kind of got all those horizontal lines coming through it. Either. I've got uh, I've got a better color model image of these elevations, but I was having trouble finding them. They might be on. If you were going to render it as if it, like the, the blocks actually were doing their job versus the way it's currently rendered. Right. Um, to show the segments so that that is being worked into the uh, um, construction drawings, but we didn't we didn't get any we didn't want to present anything tonight that hadn't been in your packets. So uh, that will that those improvements will show up in the next application package, which has to be in this week for the next meeting. What you're talking about is making it look like it could be an arch. I mean the way it's it's set up there now without modern construction you couldn't possibly construct that stones hanging out in space right so those segmented arch blocks with the you know, appropriate sort of trim relief to them will line <laughs> that opening and, and make it make sense as a masonry opening um, you know and, and you know have a little bit of vertical size to it considering the scale of that arch um, that's our that's that's our proposal um, but I, I didn't want to present anything you hadn't seen prior to tonight tonight so um, uh, Brad, can I just ask you where when we go back to the elevation drawing yeah if the landscaping and everything in the back with regard to the bike path connection ends up having that elevated platform boardwalk how much of that arch will you actually see well um, I, I'll come back to something I said moments earlier which is that uh, we're proposing to eliminate all that you are okay yeah okay we, we I couldn't I didn't make that connection that okay we yeah to eliminate the boardwalk too okay right because the uh, um, I think I think the concern was that big change of grade there and, and to being too much stuff plugging up that gotcha. corner because that was the only Thank place you. we could do it. No, I understand. Um, but but I am, like I said, we, we would be willing to consider some like a pedestrian bridge coming over from the garage at at 528, so it connect right into the bike path. That might be a little more practical. That would mean that people would have to walk through the garage to get. Yeah, they would. I expect bike riders are going to come into this garage. We're proposing bike storage in there. Mm. You know, um, we skateboarders too. Probably. Oh, you won't be able to keep them out. Yeah, you won't be able to keep them out. Um, I just worry about bicycles riding through the garage. That seems an inherent conflict. Taking your bike in there and parking it, you know, next to it, the entrance is one thing, but actually riding through there as part of a park doesn't seem. And I, I think a pedestrian bridge would probably just clutter things up. Okay. Uh, okay. I won't argue with you about that. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff going on that, that you probably don't want to hear about the floodplain planning and all that stuff. Uh, so I, I guess with those few points 
brought up that I wanted to bring up, uh, I, I want you guys to maybe hit me with some questions. Yeah. So the arch. Yeah. I'm still not a real big fan of it. And you said you did have something to show me or not? Uh, we're going to include that in our next application package, which is due this week, right? Yeah, depending on what Dan says at the DRB. But that won't, doesn't necessarily come back to here unless there are design changes that need to come back. If, okay. If they all vote on the design, or you can not vote on it and wait to see what else comes yeah. out. You have an alternate. You're preparing an alternate. We are preparing an alternate for that, yeah. And I'd be happy to come back just on that one issue if it made us, you know, limit the hearing to come back and show us the details of that. Um, I just have to throw myself on the mercy of the court and point out, you know, how many other threads there are to this thing right now sure. in terms of other permits activity going on. So it wasn't that we were given the idea short shrift, we just didn't get it done in time to make that submittal. I think for me it was like the one thing that I was looking to see. I know, and that's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> um, the other thing too is that the curved roofs that that wasn't on the renderings the last time. Correct? No, that is uh, that is um, in response to comment we got at other board meetings. I think that might have been the city council started it, but the idea that the tops of those towers uh, flat they they were lacking in some jazz. Um, I, I personally like that curved shape, that's that slightly curved roof shape. I've, I've used it in other work of mine, so it's it's something I kind of dig. But um, it also allows us to sort of bring the total mass of that thing down because we can allow that roof shape to sort of follow the runs of the stair down, and we don't have to have that big empty volume over the inter intermediate landing. So the one closest to the hotel sheds onto the, onto the garage? Itself. Yes. Uh, the purpose of that being that we didn't want any snow or anything sliding off yeah. of that and dropping down right. to um, the entrance to the garage. Now, another thing that from many, many months ago we had talked about was the, um, the steel work at the openings. Yes. And how we wanted you to look at different approaches. Um, I think this is fairly similar to it's ex it's exactly similar to the previous uh, thing. Um, I, I, I'm of two minds on that, and and I'll I'll say why we left it there because we've incorporated other kinds of big art into this design now at the, at the encouragement of the city council and and, and members of the public. Um, so one thing we could do is we could have us do this and make it part of the approved design, or we could engage in a process where there's some com competition for these pieces of public art and that gets integrated into the design we create the place for it and then we go about because we're not specifically proposing that the paintings that we're showing here are you know are what we want to do for art those those are those are images that I just captured because I thought they were cool but um, <coughs> Uh, I think our belief is that that all th those paintings and perhaps that sculpture as well ought to be something where we we have a little bit of a public process to do that, and that was really well received at the city council level. So the openings where you have steel, yeah, that those you're, you're calling that sculpture or those or those 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 that, bars going was, every which way. That was an architectural element. Well, I mean, I can. Uh, I can get the same job done a lot of ways. I'm using I'm using that steel sort of to brace up the lintels, but it doesn't have to necessarily be that shape or those colors or. Um, so, that's that's how that's left at the moment. If that's unsatisfactory, then you know we can talk about that and come back with some more options. I think we talked about kind of different relief or you know yeah. some depth to it as well. Yeah, it it does you know it it does sort of fit within a space about. Uh, 20 inches wide and those pieces are free to sort of occupy that whole plane mm -hmm. um, but uh, no I'm uh, what was the idea behind the random sort of bars going every which way my thought process and, and, and again you know I'm not a I'm not a sculptor but um, uh, my thought process was that it, it sort of uh, was meant to be a, uh, a, a callback to the uh, to the steel elements and various parts going their way on the on the, the trestle bridge, bridge. Yeah. And, and at the same time, 
be kind of similar in a way to bike spokes. So not explicitly one thing or another, but you know, when you look at that trestle bridge, obviously it's made up of triangles, but we don't perceive them that way. We perceive them, we look through them multi, multi-dimensionally and there are pieces going different directions depending on which side of the bridge they're on and what part of the truss panel it is. So that, that was the, the genesis behind that idea. Um, and, and we, we thought by having them at, you know, at different angles, it sort of broke up some of the boxiness of the, you know, there's a lot of square linear things going on here. We're looking for opportunities to soften it up. How many are there at this point? There are, uh, there are um, sculptures like that uh, here, on this corner here, there's another one in the center of this wall here facing the street, and then there's, there's the one by the front entrance. Uh, we left the last 40 some odd feet of the wall here uh, is, is essentially blanked out now to receive whatever happens in the future from the, uh, you know, if the church does their, their project. Um, and uh, so there are, there are uh, this opening is glazed in, that's where the stairs are, and this one is solid because it's facing another building. So there are four of them. Solid, just the... Just the brick and granite. Oh, it, oh no, how, ma how many of these panels you mean? Or oh, no, sorry. I yeah, just the brick and the granite. Uh, there's a solid panel here on this corner because it addresses the church, both the church and and this other uh, what people call the garage building. Yeah. And then there's uh, you know there's another solid corner. Uh, well, there's another big section of solid wall between the two buildings, and then it turns to green wall once it comes out from behind that other, from the hotel. Yeah. So there's four steel sculpture panels. Yes. Yeah. The uh, other, uh, are there any provisions for art panels on the State Street side of the building? Um, these, I think, are, you know, people are going to see them driving by. Yeah. Probably from the bike path, but you're going to be it, and they're going to, you're going to have to have quite a look up, and it seems like more people uh, would, uh, would see, so I don't know how hard it, I don't know whether you have the elevation of that yeah. or not, that could, uh, you could, is there a way you could do the same thing on that side? Um. Yeah, so uh, this is the side facing Christ Church or State Street, um, but you know, we could, we could do that same treatment uniformly across here if you wanted I mean, and just mirror the image that's on the other side of the building um, or we could have these individually and then there are there are sort of relieved panels on the solid sections there are lots of relieved panels you can see them indicated here there's like a two inch reveal where these pop back and and those happen those are sprinkled sort of all over the place the question is is how much of that do you really how much of this do we really want to have happen, um, do do we want it to be to find the building, or do we want it to have it sort of be focused as a sort of feature? Um, I, I, I was thinking more of having you know the, the, whatever spaces could work could be constructed so they could be that, and not really changing the whole design of it. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah so just so constructing the surface so it works. And so that would work here, and here. It could it could work yeah. here, although I think it would compete with other things going on. It could happen down here as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, there are there are other opportunities for art on the building, and uh, we have talked uh, sort of at the city council level of maybe having the the council for the arts and and uh, and some of the local arts institutions get get sort of involved a little bit in curating that art or or helping choose it, um, and then so if if that were the case. This board or or the development review board could could say, well, when that process is done, we'd like to see it before you paint it up or something. I and I, that would be perfectly appropriate, and <coughs> and I'd be happy to do it. So it, it it sounds to me like I dropped the ball a little bit on on the uh, steel sculpture part of this. I apologize, um, but I can add that to the list of things we should talk about next time I see you. Um, if. Uh, it is your pleasure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting, if it's going to be something that 
is designed into it, we would want to know that that's what it really is going to look like if it is a spot that is being left open for people to sort of create something that seems like a slightly different animal. So I don't know which. So can I get a sense of, of the committee as far as um, which of those two approaches you favor? Would you like to pin some of this down and leave only only the painted portions as being sort of competitively arrived at, or I mean, or do you think it's appropriate that we make that a public process? Because I could go either way. I and and if and, I, and I'm happy to come back and explore the fine grained detailing of that with you. Um, but I do I do sense a, a real urge in the, for public involvement in some of this art. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, whatever sculpture you put in the windows, that's going to be one of your last installation items, right? So you, you basically have some time. I mean, I, I'm thinking about the public input. I'm thinking about having a design competition for that, as you, su you suggested. Yeah. That all takes some time, but... Uh, well, yeah, I, I, behind all of this is a concrete structure that holds everything up. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I think we would have time if you, if 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 there's a consensus that that's the right way to go about it, um, because at a minimum we ought to pick some paintings for these big panels here. Which, uh, if you approve this, you're just going to approve these white spaces as rec receiving future art, um, and we can act on that permit and build the project. And it, you know, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it just to probably just means labeling them that way on the drawing, right? Yeah, okay, well, which we certainly can do in the final permit drawings. Yeah. Um, but, again, if, if, if the portal, portal sculptures or whatever you want to call them, it, it, those, I agree, I think we talked about that and I just slipped my mind. If we, if we want to explore a design that becomes part of the approval, then I guess we'll have to do a little more work and come back on that. Any questions? Well, he's got the drawings up. How about the living wall? What, what's up? I know we had talked about maintenance of it and who is responsible for it and will it last? And yep. Can um, dig into that a little bit? Well, uh, the, um, I brought a physical sample of it. And you, you can see the other thing we've done in the in the elevations. You can see where we've perforated it with some kind of playful openings as well. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, plant materials uh, specified on the landscaping plan include trumpet vines for, and Virginia creeper. Um, and uh, according to our landscape architect, it's going to be like maintaining new trees. And it's going to be about the same amount of commitment as if you did a, you know, a new plantation of street trees. Someone's going to have to periodically go through and remove dead growth, you know, and and um, and the uh, the roots will have to be monitored and watered and cared for, you know, until these things really establish. Um, I think we can all think of examples of buildings that are really covered with ivy, and there is ivy in the mix as well. Um, you know, once it gets past a certain level of maturity, that stuff is, is like kudzu. It really, it really hangs in there. Uh, so the the big commitment is is in getting it to establish. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I I think that may be a question for the for the management team in the end because all of this is going to have to be managed. Yeah, every surface is going to have to be cleaned. Every surface is going to have to be, you know, lit and uh, all of that. Uh, the landscaping, whether it was on the ground or on the wall, is still has to be maintained in accordance with your ordinance. It becomes part of the approval. Um, so what? So you're showing us you're representing a living wall here. Yes. And at what stage of growth is this representation? Is uh, this the ideal it, state at a certain day from? Uh, the the, uh, the black and white elevations don't really show plantings growing on the wall system, but uh, the, uh, the renderings um, the renderings do show them like fully grown out. Um, Can I, I jump in here a little bit? I, I think the the main strategy is 
can you just oh, I'm sorry, I'm James, for the record? James Finley oh, Sheriff, landscape architect. I didn't <laughs> see a sneak sorry. in. Thank yeah, God. <laughs> sorry. Um, so the strategy with the living wall here is to have several different species. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that they'll be doing different things at different times. And then we'll also have evergreen climbers in the background. So part of the maintenance will be seeing which vines thrive and encouraging those. And perhaps we've really over planted. And so uh, the idea is that um, right off the bat, we'll have a lot going on on the ground. Year two, we hope to see it sort of at the second floor. Year three and four is where that really will take off, and we're hoping to have, you know, three or four, four floors of coverage at that point. Um, the other point of the maintenance that's great here is that because we have a garage on the inside, the maintenance will be able to pull any dead stuff from the inside of the garage through and, and control any of the dead material that way. That's it. So what they'll do is they'll put the clippers through and pull, you know, any of the dead stuff that they can pull through. That's the idea. You're say, saying it's going to take like three or four years to fill in? Yes, that's right. I, you know, generally with plants, they, you know, the second year, first year they go in, they're pretty, pretty static. And then by year two, they take off year three and four, they really start to grow a lot. That said, we've got really aggressive species like wisteria and uh, Virginia creeper and things like that. So I, I do feel we're going to get good coverage. I think the key is, as Greg said, the trellis that we're putting on it is definitely not ugly and it's, it's actually quite nice. And so part of that, the joy of these vines and these green walls is seeing the plants kind of make their way up over that fourth dimension of time. And I think um, overall the experience as the years go and as the, the vines grow will be an, a beautiful thing. And I think that the, the people will enjoy it kind of seeing it progress over time. Uh, Bill. Yeah. Uh, Bill, you want to go to the microphone, oh, sure. please? Well, I, am, I, I, am I didn't know you were back. No no, I'm sorry, I was answering those lighting <laughs> questions. I, I'm by no means a uh, design expert or a horticultural expert. I just wanted to share. I was happened to be in Minneapolis last weekend and came across a parking garage with a green wall and took a picture. So oh. if people wanted to see one in place. Um, Do you know how old it is? I don't have any idea. I just. But Minneapolis. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We've been working with the, the guys that uh, provide this also have done a Whole Foods in um, Chicago that's doing well, and it's yeah. very I brutal. not looking thing. for it, came across it and said, oh. <laughs> good, good. Uh, uh, I am certainly not a plant expert at all, but it, I seem to have this recollection in the back of my mind that Virginia creeper is an invasive plant that spreads. It, it does, and that's we're gonna harness that. That's what we want. Well, is to it, give. it spreads. I don't think it's technically an invasive. No, I it, checked the I checked the plants. Okay, it is very aggressive, and that's why we selected it. I got a lot of bad examples to show you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm I, sure you do. I, I checked it against Vermont's invasive Just list, and we'll we'll check again. But I don't yeah. think it was there. It should be fairly easy to control it in this environment. In this application, that was the other reason we felt good about it. So do you, do you have an image, an elevation of what this will look like uh, year one? We could do a time study. I know that when we first went through this process, we had shown elevations of it at sort of year three and four, where we anticipated the vines to be up around the third and fourth level. Another thing that is a factor in this, um, and it's not so well shown in that rendering is that we are also calling for uh, river birch all along the two main frontages there, the two elevations. And we're ex uh, expecting those to go in, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 feet, maybe even a little bit bigger. And those birches will, cut, will, will go in and grow quickly. And I think they will also, you know, cover the first, you know, 25, 30 feet of the building to kind of create a, a scrim to look through, especially in winter. We feel like that that'll be attractive with the green ivy behind um, yeah I, like I said the, I don't have one showing it in interim stages I, it's just this is this is what it looks like day one and you know we're talking about a process that will take two or three years to get up to the fourth floor oh yeah yeah but like I say that I that you know I, it's okay to have that process happening and to watch plants growing and, and work their way up a, a, a climbing trellis I think that's there's something very attractive of that as well as having a green square. The way they kind of meander their way up, especially on the, um, the heating building that GBA did. You know, you see those vines kind of going up the side, and they're beautiful how they kind of pioneer their way up and, and 
around to cover the full elevation. Almost to me, that's more beautiful than the wall of green, you know, that's thick and heavy. And yeah, sometimes. I like seeing less structure. Yeah, I think it's not, though. You know, if this was cheaper or something, I'd be concerned, but it's this is a very beautiful product. And then when it's on these four by eight sheets, and as Greg has shown by cutting these little ellipse, elliptical apertures yeah, in That's what I'm it'll... looking for. I saw it in one of these pieces. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's. Bill, your picture is really useful because it shows the kind of varied texture of the different plants. Right. Now, is it possible for you to find out from Minneapolis? What, I will. I'll, I'll, what I'll they ask. Did we, we their climate is very similar to ours. Exactly. We showed a case study um, from Chicago, I think, when we did this first process, and I can I can dig all of that back up. And there's a lot more parking garages in Minneapolis, St. Paul, than here. So <laughs> I don't think there's any one. I'll uh, in uptown. Uptown. <laughs> Get your information back there. Fly out there. Yeah, and, and we've obviously planted it kind of uniformly with a hedge texture that we have, but that's that's the limits of you know, our software. It's yeah, no, it's it's very difficult to show that. But I guess this is what I was looking for. And yeah, so is this yes, this is you order this from the manufacturer of this with these cut into it, or are you is somebody going to we'll cut have in? to customize those? I think they can do almost anything. They have a, a really a good ability to, to do stuff, but I'm sure we can just cut that easily too if we need to. I mean, this looks like a powder coated thing, and then we're gonna. Well, our our thought yeah. our thought process is periodically you should be able, you should have the, the the opportunity to just sort of come upon an opening and be able to look out yeah. at different levels on the building. Right. And so you know it was it was meant to be kind of playful, and, and that's it. And and I think that maintenance will will play a part there, keeping it a little bit lighter. We don't want this to be a super heavy feeling when you're inside either in the summertime. The uh, one thing I thought about, you know, the square towers you had for uh, the stair towers. Yeah. It uh, and I, I don't quite understand how you exactly what you're going to do now. I understand the curve was, but I think there might be some interesting views from that if people mm -hmm. can look at the downtown. Now, I'm just yeah. thinking about the square towers that you stand up there and you know, yeah, yeah, uh, look around platforms. and see the downtown. Somebody suggested I don't I can't remember who, but and it seems like a great idea to uh, to go around the top floor of this thing and sort of mount on the parapets. Uh, on this little picture showing what you're looking at. Mm. Mm. I've seen those. Before. And those uh, cool, yeah. I would really love to see that happen here. Yeah. Um, you know, so that people you know they could get out of their car and they're parking, but then they, they kind of walk over to the edge of the garage and kind of check out downtown. Uh, because yeah, I think I think you'll have uh, amazing views from the top floor of this thing. I, I, you know, the, the the enclosed part of it. I I just think that ought to be thought about. I don't have a strong opinion mm -hmm. about it. Oh, as far yeah. as the stair towers themselves, where there's yeah. a, there's yeah. a lot of glass I, I, yeah. on them. Uh, yeah, another layer to that could also be the lighting and how the lighting is handled inside of there. Perhaps it's different colors I just for different want seasons. The or roast to kind of you know, you still could get the view out of them. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right, you know, right, right. Yeah. Because they go right down to the floor, right? Well, they they come down to, you know, they, they're, they're going to come down to f five feet off the deck or something like that. But the stairs are going down underneath them, you know. So, so people will be able to look up to them. Yeah. No, but they have the, the top floor of those are shown as all glass. But wasn't the intent to soften the towers to reduce the overall height? And yeah, the, the squared off caps just uh, were leaving people a little cold. Yeah, the one, the north elevation though, which is the one that's going to be facing State Street. Yeah. That one has glass in there, so people are going to be able to see out, and that's going to be the one with the that's, elevator, right? That's where you're waiting for the elevator. Yeah. Is that big window right there? So they'll right be able there. to see out there. Okay. Yeah, and you'll have a little bit of solid wall where the elevator itself is, and then the rest of that is all glass. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually picturing that maybe a, some kind of parking symbol happens up here. Uh, I, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think the signs will come in as a separate ap application. Yeah, I think so. Probably after permit. Um, I, I, and I assume something like that would be part of the sign package. But so I mentioned a second floor pedestrian connector. Yeah. So if that doesn't happen, how is the connection made? The, the, the way it had been per the original uh, application, which was... Uh, 
I'm going to try to find a site plan here. Uh, let me use this one real quick. Um, not the best one. Uh, it shows it. Yeah, but, between the hotel and the... It, right. Um, it, it, it comes down from State Street along the buildings through here and along the top of this retaining wall down to the corner where it catches up with the bike path. And then all of this is down at elevation 518, 519. So this is this is a story, or more or less a story below the bike path at that point, which is trying to get up so it can get over the river. Um, and how, how wide is the space between the buildings? Uh, it's 10 feet right now. Which is the same way. It's not too restricted. No. No. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it's an urban thing. It's kind of an alley. Um, it's close, and yeah, it, it, I mean, you got a five-story tall building here and a four-story tall building here, um, but you know, it, it only lasts for about 40 feet before it pops back out into the sunlight. And is there vegetation and, on that side? I feel that uh, was there's a it. there's a green wall that's there's a solid masonry wall that comes down to here, and then it's green wall to the corner, so facing the facing the area here around the. This is yeah. this bump out is the swimming pool. Are all the paths handicapped accessible? Yeah, that route that route is ADA compliant. Um, that's the problem. I mean, to put a ramp down on this corner, it really occupied the whole corner. And this heavy dotted line here is our is our river setback. setback. That's what's holding us. Right? So we really don't want to put development in that zone. Uh, although there's some uncertainty about that, I in the comments. Uh, we didn't quite understand where you were going with that, but I think that's a that's a conversation for tonight. Yeah. And so, uh, Greg, anything else you want to say? No, I think we should give the public some time. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to move things along too fast, but I want to keep them going. You guys, I'll see if I can more just try to understand like the relationship of the what's happening. Like this is a concrete wall retaining wall. it's a retaining wall mm -hmm. and then what happens in this space it's going to be like a it's going to be like it's a our same planting so yeah. basically down all the way down the train tracks we have this uh river birch and red fescue grass um planting sort of palette and that would continue on down here and even wrap the building and so the idea is to keep this continuous yeah from down the and train so what, go what goes through the arch unfortunately i this is area that's left for flooding we have to leave it at that so elevation. water goes through the arch yes when the flood but comes like, if if there were a flood in downtown right. Mount Pillar, everything would be underwater sure, sure. Yeah. yeah water would flow into that yeah, lowest yeah. level and then flow back out that's the idea but so right. our pedestrians there is i saw a gate in some rendering there are, are people encouraged to walk through there uh we wanted to put a gate on the west on the east end of this heading over towards the uh um the, the north branch of the river uh, for access if this gets temporarily assigned as a, a farmer's market space or something. So the ground plane of this building is flat now, or essentially flat, which makes it available for, you know, an expanded farmer's market coming sort of inside and undercover if that needed to happen or other, other types of activities. As we explored that possibility, we said we should put a gate in there, you know, in case, you know, just, just to give us the flexibility to, to have people come So and go. the pedestrian can walk on a, that sidewalk pokes you out here? It would That's be up on the upper up, side. Up here. Yeah, so it would be up here. And, and then come this elevation through. drop is 10 feet? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's eight, eight, eight feet. Eight, well, it's, yeah. it's 10 feet floor to floor in a garage, but the f existing grade out here is a two, little bit less, is yeah. two or three feet lower than that. And then this area is level as drawn here? Yes. Yeah. And is just sort of... It'll be planted with birches and, and this yeah. fescue grass, so it would be planted, but we have Why to... Why did you choose, choose river birch? One, because um, just going through down the railroads, we've noticed a lot this wonderful kind of scrim of river, river birch along the edge of the um, railroad track as it goes sort of to the east and to the west. Um, and so we found the idea was to kind of keep that feeling and that, that look continuous down the, the side of the, the, the train track there. Um, the other thought is that we've had to, the grass we've chosen is a very hardy grass because the railroad will spray 
and we need to have whatever we have there very a low maintenance and very resilient so that's the, the kind of the birth of these two things then the idea is to have birches of different heights and different maturity to kind of give it a more natural feel rather than just plunking them in a line to kind of it's very acclimate it. Birches are a short-lived, high-maintenance tree. Well, part of it is also there's a power line running down there, so we can't have ginormous trees kind of along that corridor. That's one of the practical things we've been dealing with. So the thought is that if we have sort of 25-foot birch trees that are regenerating and we're encouraging the young one, you know, younger, we have sort of two or three different maturity levels being planted that we would have this succession. So we would always have this scrim, and if uh, we did lose a tree or two, it wouldn't you know we wouldn't suddenly have a gaping hole to a parking lot or to whatever i understand the need to let the water out and that makes sense to me the language of arch really means to me like something special and some sort of entrance mm -hmm. and some sort of like hey this is a really cool like moment to kind of go through mm -hmm. this feels like it's on the back of the building and there's no reason to go through it and it's kind of just coming to this sort okay. of grassy yeah. area um, that's my thoughts, but I mean, I like the concept. Yeah, but I, I feel like mm -hmm. I think in the background too, there is a model being run now of exactly what we can have there in terms of flooding and what levels we can. I think. Yeah, there that is, is that is that is a thing that's running now for the next couple of right, weeks. Right. So we've um, kind of presented the most extreme version here of what we would need there, but it, it, if we could bring that grade up and then bring the arch up, I think Greg would. I just want to. Do I don't something. know. Uh, no, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's it's a sort of architectural form, it's integrity form question. Yeah. Which yeah. seems to be antithetical to its form. You know, right. It it's, it's, no. <laughs> I came away from our last get together, sort of understanding that that perspective, and it, I mean, from an architectural theory point of view, it's it's right on. I mean, but uh, and then then I said, well, they want to get rid of the arch, and everybody was disappointed. <laughs> so. I will take another look at it, but I mean, I have to have an opening down there. Mm -hmm. If it's not an arch, it's going to end up being a square opening, which maybe is, in your mind, is just drawing less attention to itself and therefore is. Mm -hmm. But if we go to that elevation sheet again, I mean, you can kind of see the difference. I'm going to just close this site plan. This, this is the side facing Memorial Drive with the arch and the art panels, and this is the side facing Christ Church without the arch. And uh, um, it's it's just a little less uh, it's a little more plain spoken, um, and and in keeping with your thought process, I mean, I wouldn't want to line it with a colonnade or anything else similarly, because again, I'm making a promise that I'm not ending up keeping. Okay. So maybe in this case, less is more aesthetically. Okay, I um, I I will do this though. I, I expect that we're going to see you at least once more before this whole process is done. I, I don't know, I mean, um, right. I mean, it's, it, it depends on if, what you guys want to decide on. If you don't decide on everything, we can definitely bring it back. And if there's major design changes between now and. I think, there, I think there's a couple of areas and, the, and they're consistent with our last meeting, I'm sorry to say, but I mean, that's kind of where we are. Um, that that, uh, that that this arched opening and, and the treatment of these portal braces needs more attention and if you could write a condition that said you know we'll, we'll move you on but uh, but we want to see this again before construction or something I don't yeah, know we could probably do, I mean I, I to, to do a final thing I think there's too many things up in the air yeah. uh, and that's partly just a, a fairness thing with other applicants when yeah. things are up in the air we and a table. Just, well, just, I, I just came in expecting this was going to be more than one meeting. I didn't know I didn't know we were ready for a vote tonight, <laughs> or I might have worked this weekend. Well, let's let's hear from the public. Yeah. We got 20 yeah. minutes before the DRB starts. So. Hear from Would people like me to turn the lights on or leave them off at this point? I don't know how much people are going to be wanting reference to the. Okay, we'll turn it on. We saw how much difficulty he had finding any some drawings. Is that you? That's me. Okay. Yeah. So, you got to line up your drawing. Oh. That's what I mean. Commercially. Uh, did Did you guys want to see the these at all? Yeah, the marble. Just yeah. So I can see. 
And this is for the trim bands. Trim bands. And we actually going to need to come back for retaining wall finish, too, because I don't think they have that. And, and this is going to be this, uh, the, it's, that's going to be the trim bands. Right, right. I'm just looking at the rough finish, oh. uh, which I'll tends to get dirty. I'll, I'll just ask after the presentation. Let's just let it finish. What? Let it finish. Yeah, but it just it's gonna catch yep. ca catches dirt. Oh, yeah. So that's what happens. That's what happens to the Greg. Quick question: That flame finish. Yeah. Uh, my experience with that is that it tends to catch a lot of dirt. Okay. And yeah, then you then you get moss growing on it. And if you want to look at the state office building, the marble building right across from the state house, uh, that. Uh, has continual problems because it's a rough finish. So you, you would prefer the, the opposite side as the I, own surface? Just from an appearance, it's not going to make any difference, but from a maintenance issue, uh, I think it is. Uh, and if you uh, look at the wall in front of the in front of that building, that used to be a, a, a smooth finish, mm -hmm. and for some reason, they sandblasted it, so it's rough. Oh, now it catches all the dirt and moss and stuff grows in it. You know, it's just uh, okay. it's a practical thing rather than probably not within the purview of this committee. Let's hear from public. Okay, okay. my name is Paul Carnahan. I live on Sable Street. Um, I've got a couple of uh, quick uh, comments from the sort of from the public perspective. Um, the first one uh, regarding the uh, much discussed arch, um, I would agree with Seth and Ben that it seems to be, it's announcing an entrance that isn't there, it seems like it's a strange thing to put there. Um, it's also, if you're standing on uh, Memorial Drive, it's going to be um, bisected uh, by the raised um, uh, bike path. So you're not really going to get that full arch, you're going to just sort of get the, the suggestion of an arch. And then from the drawings, you're also going to get this diagonal going through it. That's the um, the parking level, uh, because the parking levels are are diagonal. So it seems to me it it, it doesn't work at all. I I, I love the um, the idea of the uh, the the art above it. Um, it seems to me that square openings would work just as well as the the arch. Um, it doesn't seem to me to uh, to add anything to the building and in fact sort of distracts from it. Um, the public art alone would be um, with a, just square openings that consistent with the rest of the building would seem uh, a logical way to go. Um, then I also want to comment about the, all the fences around the bottom, uh, keeping people from going in and out of it. Um, that seems to me a, a missed opportunity and sort of a um, an unfriendly aspect of the plan as seen now, uh, particularly on the, uh, the east end uh, where the architect was suggesting a gate. I would suggest <laughs> just no, no, no fences at all. I mean, you know, what are we trying to keep out? I'm not sure. Um, if the problem is um, you think cars are going to roll through there, you can put up um, uh, granite bollards or those, uh, those low um, uh, bumpers for cars to uh, to rest against. Um, it seems to me um, I really don't like the way that there's uh, fences all around the bottom of this, particularly when there's the um, the bike path on the um, on the uh, what is that southern side of the uh, of it. Um, I, going along with that, I'm curious about what's happening on the eastern side of the parking garage. I think uh, Ben was starting to ask about that. Uh, it seems like there's sort of a no man's land that's been created uh, behind the old garage. We've got two garages going here, so it's a little confusing. But the uh, historic garage and then the modern garage. Um, maybe there's parking going on back there in one of the plans. It seems to show a, uh, a driveway. I'm not quite sure how traffic is going to be monitored going um, back and forth through that alley with cars. Um, it seems like that needs a real uh, resolution. It looks like the, uh, the architect has totally ignored that area, uh, maybe because it's not um, 
part of the land that the city is renting from the Keenies, but maybe it should be. Um, I don't think we should be, since this is a city project, um, I think the city should be taking responsibility for how that space is going to work. Um, I also wanted to talk about the, or comment on the uh, connection of the um, garage to the bike path. Uh, it's already been discussed. Again, I think Seth and Ben have been sort of uh, asking questions about that. It seems to me it's a really weak uh, area and aspect of this plan. Um, right now, I think there is still a door uh, showing on the plans at that um, bottom right corner of the uh, illustration that's um, on the screen right now, which basically opens up into nothing. Um, it's going to open up into a bank, so people are going to have to scale a, a an uh, eight-foot bank to get up to the parking, or to the, um, the bike path, or they're going to go toward the river through this area that I've just described as a no man's land. Uh, maybe it's paved, maybe it's not, um, maybe it's grass, it's, it's unclear what that is. Um, so it seems to me you're promising the pedestrians something that you're not delivering on. Um, the architect suggested a, um, a uh, bridge across. Um, Eric said they thought that might clutter it. Um, that might be true, but it would give a better access to that um, to that bike path. Um, right now, there's the uh, the alleyway to the um, to the uh, west of the, the garage. Um, I would think that the um, uh, the local businesses, none of whom are represented here today, would be very disappointed with. The connection to the um, to the downtown to to Main Street. Uh, we're building this beautiful um, bike path bridge connecting this back area to um, to Main Street. One of the things that's important with uh, encouraging downtown um, uh, success and vibrancy is having multiple paths to various places. So I think people are going to be taking that that bike path bridge um, into the center of town. It's going to deliver them right next to the uh, Savoy and uh, right along Main Street. Uh, I think it's a real shame not to uh, provide a stronger way for them to get up onto that bike path uh, or pedestrian path and get into the city. Uh, second comment is also about pedestrians. The path for, if you look at your plans, the path for pedestrians from the garage over to State Street are perilous. Um, this hasn't been thought out at all. You've got people walking straight across one of your two, either one of your two main uh, entrances into the parking garage, uh, and you basically are walking them through a um, through a parking lot. Uh, there appears to be, maybe be a um, sidewalk along North uh, Northfield Savings Bank, but to get to that, you have to cross one of the main driveways into the garage and then cro walk across in front of the uh, drive through for um, Northfield Savings Bank. Uh, the other side, there doesn't appear to be a, um, a uh, uh, sidewalk at all. I suspect because you are, you have a far, probably a fairly narrow uh, path, uh, traffic path going in there. So I would say um, please uh, look at the uh, pedestrian access to this. Can I just just as a did I read the plans well, wrong? No, no, no. You read the plans right. I'm just saying that because the pedestrian access is something that's technically on the hotel site plan, there's going to be further discussion of that tonight at the DRB because okay, the design these guys review, don't do, these guys the, don't right, do the design review pedestrian. doesn't do access issues. Okay. That's the development review board. Okay. Um. So just if you have other comments like that about that section. Okay. Because this is just design review. So just to help okay. make sure you, Sorry. you know, I no, 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 no. It's, it's sort of like the big thing that we're no. pushing here in, in Montpelier, and it looks like it's not uh, that the architect, I would think that the architect could um, have some ideas about how to, how to do that. Um, so I guess, I guess just the final comment is about the uh, uh, trimming of the, <laughs> uh, of the green wall that can be trimmed on the inside. Um, as a volunteer uh, several years ago, not any longer, but um, with what used to be called uh, MDCA, uh, I spent many hours uh, weeding the two front um, uh, areas under the trees in front of City Hall and picking um, weeds from between the, um, the pavers. Um, our uh, Department of Public Works has lots to do. They're not known for weeding, which is fine, um, but I find it uh, 
incredible to think that they're going to be pulling the dead um, um, branches out from inside of the, uh, the green wall. It just, um, I mean, it's, it's not going to happen. They've got, they've got a lot of things to do. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Stephen Whitaker, Tom Fielder. Uh, I'm going to point out a couple things. Time is short, and I think you're going to need to take this up on another. Uh, at a prior meeting, it was asked and responded that the green wall needs to be based in earth, that it, do it doesn't it live in window boxes, and we were told that this was going to start down here. That contradicts what you're hearing about open gates, uh, planters, doors, you know, curb stops, etc. that you're, but if this indeed needs to live in something beyond a window box, you got a real misrepresentation of the potential of this green wall. Um, the, this has been tried in areas where I've seen and have family in other areas with the garages. The maintenance uh, often falters. The dust, brake dust and tire rubber buildup from the vehicle traffic in the garage coats the leaves and kills the plants. And unless you're going to set up a maintenance routine with, you know, bi-weekly power washing of the entire garage and wastewater treatment, you're not going to have the success. I'd also ask you to think about what are the consequences of, you know, failed landscape design. It's not like you can go tear this thing down because there was a bunch of unfulfilled promises. Um, this view, specifically the renderings, this is about a 25-foot bridge, so it strains credulity that a 45-foot garage is appearing to be six or eight feet below a 25-foot bridge. So the Dis Development Review Board did suggest, or heard a suggestion, I don't know if they've acted on it, to do the floated balloon test, verified compliance witness measuring the cable up to the balloon to the height, and possibly get corrected versions of these renderings, because I have uh, one that I did, which is cons probably slightly exaggerated on the height, but conservative on the width. And I know that I went and looked at the charge of the design review committee, and you're supposed to not only preserve pedestrian access and flow, but the view sheds of the neighborhoods. And to, in effect, be blocking this, taking a city lot, a city leased, what is it, a 50-year lease on the Haney lot, and be blocking the view out to the hills, and be blocking the view from the Confluence Park which is potentially a joke at a tenth of an acre, you know, uh, blocking the view of all the church steeples and the state house, et cetera, and the superior court. Uh, those, are run those run directly counter to the design charges of the design review committee. I only had a chance to preliminary look at those tonight, and I haven't printed them. But so getting accurate renderings, objective verified renderings of heights, impacts, and view analysis is important. Um, preserving the walkways uh, to to basically take a, a common city through throughway, which is the farmers market lot, where we would get to the park and totally obstruct it by putting this garage 20 feet from the north branch is again directly contrary to the criteria that's supposed to guide your decisions so i'm asking you to not assume that this is tinkering with a pre-approved plan from before this is a much bigger garage with a much bigger footprint encroaching right to the limit even an unverified riverbank uh, you i would encourage a site visit to that site and look at where the riverbank is and have the, the architects or the engineers mark the corner of where this garage is going to be and, and examine the challenge to get. We do need to maintain access, pedestrian and bike access up there. That's a problem they can't solve, then they don't get to build their garage. You know, it's, it's really that fundamental. 
light spillage from the openings. You've seen these bright 18 inch or 24 foot fixtures. Those are gonna be radiating out through the openings in this garage, well beyond the exterior lighting. You asked about blinding. A pedestrian walking in the night happens to glance towards the garage and gets night blinded. That's not acceptable. You know, I'm not that I'm advocating for closing off all the openings in the garage. I'm advocating for not building it in this location. Um, views, rendering accuracy, balloons, light spillage. There's nothing. This is an entirely different project than what was reviewed a couple of years ago and approved as part of a hotel project. Uh, just the city, by being the co-applicant, has compromised its objectivity and its due, due diligence as far as, with the exception of Baird, <laughs> with, uh, with what needs to be reviewed here. And slow down, do it right, ask every question, demand verification, and put penalties if it doesn't come through. Uh, there's nothing wonderful or beautiful or playful about this. This is putting lipstick on a pig and it's not going to work. Thank you, Stephen. Anybody else? Public comments? Uh, I don't know what's your pleasure. I think say what my view is is that I mean we've heard some public comments that I'd like to take into consideration and see what the architect does about it I don't think we're ready to move on it tonight but okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I need? just have a procedural question in a way we have are we going to be trying to find a special <coughs> hearing time uh, next week to do this or do we just bump it to the next one and the next one's pretty busy, right? The next November. one's pretty busy. Uh, I would be in favor of a special meeting. Uh, okay, okay. Next week and all. It, it, dep it depends yeah. on how. Oh, oh that would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I, we really want to move this along. It's yeah, but these are substantive eight, issues. Eight, we, eight, I didn't eight, come eight. in here tonight expecting to walk out with an approval. I, I wanted to make progress towards that goal, though. Yeah. And I think, I think there's a couple of lingering issues that really need to be addressed. I, 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 I do from think that this is the biggest project we've seen in Montpelier for, I've lived here 42 years, and certainly the biggest project we've seen uh, here, and I, I don't want to make any mistakes that we can avoid uh, in terms of design and operation. We're completely, and we're completely on board with that. Just one very brief comment. I just want to give Greg, Greg a little cover here with regard to the arch. I will say that it was discussed, at, I'm speaking here as city manager, um, the city council very strongly liked it, asked for it, so he's, he got his marching orders from the council to put that in. I'm sure we'll review that with him, but uh, lest you think that uh, he was being recalcitrant and not bringing in options of me, his marching orders from the other end of, of you know, so that's fine and, and we'll obviously follow the regulatory process, but I just want to make sure that uh, you understood that. There were, there were a couple comments made this evening that, that I'd, I'd like to pull the board on. Um, the, uh, the grills at the ground floor, the security fencing or whatever you want to call it, um, it, it doesn't serve any code function. I mean, it's, there, there are some people who are concerned that people are going to be back there hanging out. We don't want people filtering into the garage from multiple points. But I'm okay not having that fencing. If, but I, I just want to know what the sense of the board is on that, um, because that that's an interesting possibility. I mean, finish grade is the same on both sides of that opening. So. Well, is it something where landscaping? Wise, it can be up elevated like that. And if you want to come back we, uh, James can back me up on this if he wants to jump up here. But uh, we understood that we don't need a continuous strip of planting. We just need some places for the leaders to go up oh. to get started. And and the uh, the drawing, the revised drawings that were included in your packages for tonight um, did show an extension of the. Uh, um, if I can find the right page, 
did show an extension of the green wall system down to the grade to pick that up. That was that was a legitimate point. That's the wrong drawing, though. I would also like to see at least an effort at the bridge. I do think I do take the comment of being able to park on the second floor and walk out and walk towards the Savoy as a really valid concern. And I would like to see a rendering or at least an idea sure. of how that would how that experience oh, would happen. Go. So you can it's a little dark, but you can see here that there are panels here, here, and here uh, for the uh, shown on the uh, the A two O one that was submitted. Um, that's the pathway for those plants to go up there, uh, but that's that's true. I mean that has that has to come down to pretty close to the ground for those vines to catch hold of it and take off. But it doesn't have to be continuous. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 I I thought the fence was a, a code issue. I think uh, nothing to do with the house, but I think. I don't know how the police would feel about it. Uh, the police, I think, wanted it to be very limited e ingress and egress for security reasons. Yeah, that, so. you know, and, and well, maybe we can find a fence that doesn't I, jump I, out at you so much or something. But I, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's sort of a policy issue. How are we going to operate this? Do, you know, what's our security situation look like? Um, so, but it was an interesting comment. And, and one last thing I will say is I, I, I have to defend the folks on my team who put those visual analyses together. We've done hundreds of them at this point, and we find that the, we find them to be reliably accurate. Uh, I, uh, the original Revit models for both the hotel and the garage were used. They were put into photos where we knew exactly where we were standing, how far from the object, everything. I think perspective can fool you sometimes, but I. I will bet you a cheeseburger that those are accurate uh, because we've done so many of them. This has come up, and people rarely want to believe them. So, <laughs> but I, I'll ask that you note that a public records request has made, been made for those models so that an independent architect could model different perspectives, and the city has refused to honor that, not recognizing that's work made for hire, paid for by the city, and the architect should produce those Reddit models. We, we don't we don't do that for all kinds of reasons I mean we've been happy to share whatever documents are submitted but that's kind of like asking Microsoft to give them their source code I so think the results are the purview of design review the process is something for the law office to deal with okay. yes. thank you that's yeah. uh, I, I you know I, I want to see something and obviously that you want to see these things that are accurate that accurately mm -hmm. represent the uh, whatever is going to happen so we don't look at it if we approve that at the end is this this, this yeah. really we want it to be whatever we approve to be what's really going to happen we don't cook these things to achieve a desired effect we put them into the model and they show us what they what we learn from them i do think that this is an interesting perspective that it would be nice to sort of see a rendering that's from the Hemi lot We've we've actually submitted renderings. It, it's a several iterations back, but but uh, yeah, we did. Um, I don't. We have that it. image. I can bring it next. That time. would be great. Thank okay. you. Anything else? Anybody wants to say? So the so the the bridge, the arch, and the uh, portal openings with the steel in it are the things that I I need to focus on before coming back. How how soon can you? deal with the things we've addressed today. well it'll take us the rest of the week I think you know I mean if if I, I, you know if, if we could have a couple days with it and staff could have a couple days with it we could you know we could appropriately meet so, like a so week from tonight I, I, next week is the soonest we'll be able to have I mean, enough people yeah okay I mean I, I want to give you plenty of time I mean I, I know there's a time constraint there's a vote on November 6th right but I want you to not rush things and to have as complete a package as you can yes. uh, for us. Uh, yeah. I think uh, we, we may have to pull some people to figure out what day works, unfortunately, because yeah. I know Tuesday's out for you and me because of HBC. Yeah, I'll make it work, whatever you need me. Okay. So we'll okay. do a pull tomorrow. And the fencing. Hmm? As well. and the fencing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, fencing. I, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, lots, lots to work on. I want to say thanks, everybody. We usually don't have this much interest in design review meetings. Uh, I think we rarely have an audience other than the applicants. So, so table it. Okay, motion approval. Seconded. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Just good. I'm Thanks. If this is at like eye level elevation or whatever we're looking at. Oh, yeah. Well, we can we can do better than this. That was a rush job. Yeah. Okay. I don't know uh, where we fall on the can, agenda. Can you pass me that piece of you piece to put it in the record? Thank you. And we did pretty good. We barely well stuff to design the new, so. Should I? Makes me happy. I'll leave that up. Okay. We're going to be you going next. Be Whatever one. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's nobody in front of you. Yeah. So do we have, should we get trying two minutes or we can just postpone them since it's 7 and 8? 7 and 5. Okay, so adjourn. Yeah,